Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Jana and on my channel I show you all different kinds of DIYs. In today's video I'm gonna show you how I made this little bird feeder here working with stonework clay. I also have more videos about working with stonework clay so if you're interested in that I'm gonna link them for you. If you're working with ceramics you will need a kiln. That's an oven that can fire temperatures between 900 up to 1400 degrees. But I'm gonna talk a bit more about that later in this video. If you, like me, don't own a kiln, you can try to find a pottery studio in your area that offers a burning service. If you want to try pottery without the stress of finding a kiln or dealing with the burning process, you can also check out my videos about working with air dry clay. Theoretically, you could make shapes like in today's video out of air dry clay too, but air dry clay is really hard to get fully water and weatherproof. And if you want to make a bird feeder, it's also important that it's food safe because also the little birds want a food safe container to eat from. So I don't recommend this specific project for an air dry clay project. There is also a longer ASMR version of the working process from this video. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out. I'm gonna link that in the description box for you. But now let's get started. I start by cutting off a big piece of my clay here. I use a bright speckled stoneware clay. This piece I divide in two equal pieces around 500 gram each. One of them I wrap in plastic again to prevent it from drying out while I work on the other one. The wedging is important to make sure there are no air enclosures in the clay. Once that's done I form a ball by slapping the clay. Now I start creating a bowl by using the pinching technique. I press my thumb into the clay about halfway through the ball and then start pinching the clay between my fingers and my thumb, slowly rotating the clay. This I do for quite a while, making sure I have an even pressure so the thickness of the clay is even. Also smudging the clay from the bottom of the bowl upwards to the rim helps to distribute the clay evenly. Once I'm happy with the size and thickness, I wrap the bowl in plastic to make sure it stays moist and workable and move on to the second clay piece. I decided to make the piece a bit smaller than the first one as I want to create a teardrop shape. So I will need a bit less clay for the top part than the bottom. I also wedge and slap the clay into a ball. Then I form it into a cone before I do the same pinching technique. This time I try not to create a half sphere, but rather keep the cone shape. In the end the two pieces should fit together, so I make sure that the rims are about the same size. Now I want to merge those two pieces and to do so I first tap the rims to flatten them a bit and then score them. By adding some water onto the scored rims, I create some instant slip. Then I merge the two pieces. To seal the seam, I roll out a coil and flatten it a bit first. Then I wrap it around the seam. I smudge the clay out to the top and bottom and even it out with my fingers as well as rolling it along the seam. A metal rip tool helps to smoothen it even more. If you don't have one, you can totally use a credit card or just your fingers. If the seam is a bit bumpy or has some excess clay, you can just scrape it off and smoothen it out again. 
Because of the enclosed air, this clay ball becomes quite sturdy and well formable. So by slapping it with a wooden spatula, I can bring it into the shape I want. With this base shape, you can create many different things. So in another video, for example, I used the same technique to make some vases. I will link that for you. Once the shape is how I want it and the clay is all smooth and even, I decide where I want the opening to be. I want the bird feeder to have quite an organic shape, so I just draw a circle by hand using a needle tool. I then cut it out with an exacto knife. Now I can smoothen out the seam from the inside. A normal tablespoon is a great tool for that. I can also use it to scrape off any excess. To finish off the base shape, I smoothen out the edge of the hole with a wet sponge. To be able to hang the bird feeder, I want to attach a string. So for that I punch a hole into the top. I use a reusable plastic straw for that. Rainwater might get trapped in it when hanging outside, so I need to create some kind of drainage. Drilling a series of holes on the bottom side will allow water to escape. And I add my maker's mark. I also want to create a little landing area for the birds. So I'm gonna make a tube which can hold some twigs later for the birds to sit on. After wedging the clay again, I roll out a coil and decide the length I want the tube to be. The length will not change in the further working process, only the width. Then I use the plastic straw again and punch it through the coil. It's important to go really slowly to not rip or crack the clay. I then roll the coil a bit by using the straw like handles to widen the hole a bit more. A bit of water helps to smoothen everything out after. To merge two pieces of clay, I always make sure to score the touching surfaces very well. If the clay is still quite wet, I often only brush the scored area with a wet brush to create instant slip, like I did with the rims when merging the two clay bowls. Slip is basically liquid clay, which can be used like glue when joining two clay pieces. But as the base shape starts drying slightly, I will create some fresh slip by taking a wet piece of clay and brushing it quite hard with a wet brush. The so created slip I then apply onto the scored area and wiggle the pieces together. To secure it even more I use a thin coil along the seam that I then smudge out with a wooden tool to make sure everything is joined seamless. When I'm happy with the piece, I set it aside to let it dry and prepare it for the firing process. On my last videos, I got many questions about the firing process and if I can explain a bit more about it. I have to say I'm not an expert on that as I'm not burning the pieces myself, but I'm really happy to share with you a little overview. So first of all, it depends on what clay you're using. As I mentioned in the beginning, I'm working with stoneware clay, so I'm telling you how it works for that. If you don't burn it, it will stay porous and fragile and really easy to break. A piece that is not fired is called greenware. Water would soften up the piece again and could destroy it. Firing changes the structure of the clay, so it's basically baking the pieces together, making it really strong and durable. So stoneware clay needs two firing stages to make the clay really hard and durable, as well as waterproof and food safe. First firing process is called the bisque firing, and it's done at temperatures around 900 degrees Celsius. So definitely nothing your kitchen oven can handle, so you need a kiln for that. 
After that your clay piece has transformed from clay into ceramic and is now called bisque ware. So water cannot soften it up again, but it's still quite porous and water can run through it. The liquid glaze is applied onto the bisque ware and will transform into a hard glassy layer in the second firing process. The second firing process is called the glaze firing and it's done at an even higher temperature ranging from 1000 to 1300 degrees celsius depending on the clay and the glaze you're using. Even if you don't apply the glaze, the ceramic piece will be waterproof after the second firing because the clay particles bake together even stronger. But that also causes the piece to shrink, so this is always something that needs to be considered. My pieces were fired at 1250 degrees Celsius. Before applying the glaze, I make sure to wash the bisque ware to get rid of dust and small clay particles that ruin the glaze. I apply the white glaze with a fan brush. Here I'm using the one from the brand called Bots in the color Opal White. You will find the materials I use in the description box as well. In case you're wondering why the hole is on a different spot all of a sudden, that's because I made two different ones, but I will show you both in the end. I'm doing two layers, making sure to brush the second layer perpendicular to the first. This way I find you get the most even outcome. And this is how they turned out after the glaze firing. I added the little twigs for the landing area and hung them in my mom's garden. So let's hope that the birds enjoyed a little feast. Thank you so much for watching and being here. Feel free to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye!